Okay, my friends, Roger once again, and today is quite serious. We're talking about Alzheimer's, but in addition to Alzheimer's, we're talking about every disease there is, basically what they refer to as cancers, malignant diseases, that type of thing. Billions of dollars have been funneled into researching treatments for Alzheimer's alone. Nearly every drug tested to date has failed in clinical trials. Every, every drug has. Now, this is an unbelievably fabulous video on Alzheimer's and the different proteins and the chemistry, which I am going to get into very deeply in a moment. But we're going to go off of this page, and we're going to go and look here at what the difference between bacteria and enzymes are, because this is, I believe, the area that they're missing. And I'll show you why, and then we'll go into looking at the chemistry and the biology that supports my statements and the material evidence. Okay, my wonderful friends. As you know, this is Roger Spur. I am a, a researcher. I am a material researcher. I look at what I can see as material substances and then I research those. I don't have a lot of theories. I, I, I come up with a lot of guesses <laughs> and then I follow them through. And then they become theories. And then they become proven if the material supports the theory. That's my way of doing things. Now, I've been looking into every disease, 100% of them, but Alzheimer's, this is a video on Alzheimer's, particularly good and particularly instructive about my research on bacteria, enzymes, products that are in your blood, and why you get disease. And this is a fabulous video. So, uh, again, I am Roger, the fairest fair user in the land, and we are going to look at this. Now, listen to this. Billions of dollars funneled into research treatments for Alzheimer's. Nearly every drug tested to date has failed in clinical trials. Well, they, everyone's failed. Not nearly. 100%. They may have a little better of this, a little better of that, but they all have some side effects and all kinds of things. Listen to this. It says, another common neurodegenerative disease in need of improved treatment is multiple sclerosis. And they're talking about autoimmune condition is caused by immune cells attacking the protective cover on neurons known as myelin. All the chemicals in your body have a specific chemical makeup that is different than all the other ones. And they are subject to being attacked in a different way than like your, your muscles are. So we're going to talk about that. What happens is it degrades the myelin and it leads to communication difficulties between neurons. Myelin is nothing more than like insulation on wires. So it, they short out basically. And the difficulty communicating between neurons and their connections with the rest of the body. Now, current treatments suppress the immune system can have potentially debilitating side effects, worse than being sick. Many of these treatments often fail to address the toxic effect of the myelin debris. This is it right here. The toxic effect of the myelin debris accumulate in the nervous system, which kills the cells. I have a, 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 I think we need to do a study immediately for all disease, immediately. This is the thing to remember. The debris, the myelin debris, it accumulates. It has to be broken down by enzymes. When the enzymes break it down, they go into the flush system, as your urine, feces, whatever, sweat, and they get moved out of these areas that they become, become toxic. They're toxic because they're debris. You've got to get them out of there. And here's what happens. I'll show you the lymph node system. All right, let me just show you quickly. This is the, the lymphatic system, and that is literally the garbage dump of your body. All those black dots collect garbage that's running through your body that, that needs to be get, gotten rid of. This is the stuff that's backing up these beta amyloids and these, um, the, these plaques and so forth because they can't get broken down. And apparently it's up in the head ones because this is in your head. Now, um, is it 
just because of the ones in the head can't collect it or is it some other ones is there different chemistry in all of these different lymph nodes because they're in different areas of your body down here is by your digestive system all that stuff is down there your you know sex area and are they all different? Nobody knows any of this stuff right now. What we need to do is collect a database on what species of bacteria live in your body and what bacteria are in these certain regions and what enzymes they create. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you right now, it's almost a certainty that whatever is, is your disease is, is related to some enzyme because that's the only thing that does the chemistry to break it down. Or to, you know, it breaks down food too, and it kills invaders. That's why all of these these um, viruses that are affecting the upper respiratory area, which is very, very, very heavy in collagens, and they also affect your, you know, the areas where the, you, you, your blood vessels do all that sort of stuff, and you know your heart. Um, Anything that's good rubbery is is really dense in collagen. So your your lungs are real rubbery. They open and close 24 hours a day. Your heart pumps 24 hours a day. Very rubbery, and those are the things that get attacked by these viruses. Now these viruses are are creating their own chemistry that is just like an enzyme. Only it, it attacks you instead of helps you. So. We need to find out somewhere, some bacteria created a virus and somehow it got loose and then it gets transferred, whether it's coughing through that type of thing or, or whatever. It, it, at, the, at, the, at the point you contract a virus, it may not even still be alive. You're not getting any live thing. They just, that's what they claim. I don't know if that's true or not. You may be getting a, vi a bacteria that's so small they, they just can't detect it. And the viruses are so small that they can squiggle in between what they call the tight junctions of your cells. The cells, when they meet together, they have junctions. And those junctions are supposed to keep everything out. And they become loose. The tight junctions become loose. And then the viruses are so tiny that they can squirt right, squirt right through there. And if you don't have anything to fight back at them, you're in trouble. And the things that fight back at them are your bacteria that create enzymes that are killers and they kill the invading virus now that's why it takes a, t a while to become immune because your guys your good guys your bacteria have to say whoa 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 whoa! do you see that chemistry wow that COVID is a problem man this is a problem this is a real problem let's figure it out and then it takes a while to become immune but once you do your body when it sees that chemistry come in again click it clicks onto it and kills it that's what immunity is all about. And a real good immune system means that you have the backup supporting chemistry, which is the bacteria and enzymes to do the job that you have to do. Because everything that's done in your body, 100% of the chemistry is done by enzymes, which are proteins, and they all come from bacteria. So if you've ever had antibiotics or something is killing the bacteria in your body, you're, you're not going to be healthy. That's why they sell a lot of probiotics and all this stuff. I'm not recommending anything. I'm not a doctor. I'm just a researcher. But I can tell you one thing right now. Bacteria play an extensive role in producing the products that make your body work correctly. Okay, what study am I talking about? I'm talking about for every single disease, I don't care what it is, we need a bacterial enzyme study. And what it means is we need to find out a database of what bacteria species, because there's thousands and thousands of different species. There's only single celled little buggers, but they spit out one specific enzyme, which is chemistry. So we need to know the bacteria species that are in your body, the locations, if they're separate locations. Nobody even knows this yet. How, many, how much the density is, the quantity of them there, what's normal, what isn't, and any other information we can glean about these bacteria, where they are, how they live, what makes them function, if they're acidic and salts and all that stuff. We have to collect them 
from feces, because that's where they are. They're in your poop, most of them. Are you, they, fecal, trans, fecal matter transplants now is going to be the biggest thing coming, because they repopulate your digestive system with the bacteria that break down all the foods and, and, and make all the products you need to make. If you don't have those, not going to happen. And most people, when they get old, the bacteria gets old too. And you no longer get these enzymes in the quantities you need. Anyway, that's another story. It's, it's the same as getting sick, as getting old, basically. <laughs> when I say that, I'm only a little bit kidding, because every time they say you're either immunocompromised or you're over 65, that type of thing is what they say. Now, just being over 65, is that the reason you, you're, you're immunocompromised, or why? You're still eating the same sort of stuff, you're doing the same kind of exercise, so why are you immunocompromised now? Your bacteria is not breaking down the products. What we need is a bacterial database and find out what happens. What kind of bacteria are you now missing? Because they make the, the enzymes, which are the factories. I mean, they make the, the, the bacteria are the factories that make the enzymes. The enzymes are so elegant, they're absolutely unbelievable, and they do chemistry that is extremely fast. And I, through my research in, in the fossils and how they became solid, I realized about a process called nucleophilic substitution. And that is what happens in your body 24 hours a day. And if you don't have the products coming down to carry the things in and out, you're sick. And if that, if that happens because you don't have the bacteria to make the enzymes. Now, we need to collect all these different saliva, skin swabs, blood, urine, autopsy samples from, from you know, lymph nodes and all, all the things that are, have become invaded. Why? What, is, what bacteria is living there now or what isn't living there? We need to focus on the matches of the similarities between bacteria and enzymes and the up or down risk of all these different diseases. If you keep putting everybody's, if you went to the doctor and he said, okay, the first thing you do is go in that room, they're going to take all these different samples from you and then go home, we'll call you in a couple of days. <laughs> and a couple of days later, they say, you know, guess what? We did this, and, did this, and up in your throat area, you got this or that, whatever. You don't have enough bacteria, whatever it is. This is this is the way you find out using matches and databases and and filtering the information. Otherwise, they're just walking around in circles. That's why they're all failing. They need to take into account the bacteria. The bacteria is the key. That's the garbage collector. They make the products that break down everything. All right, so we're going to be going into the Alzheimer's, but what they say is that the treatments don't address the toxic effect of the myelin debris accumulates in the nervous system. It's debris basically everywhere that causes your diseases or it's invasion of other tissues that, that ends up creating debris but it's, it's invasion of tissues or the inability to remove the tissues that, that accumulate as debris. Alright, focus on these words. Toxic effects of the myelin debris that accumulate in the nervous system. The, the, the current treatments don't, don't address this, and this is the issue. All right, I'm going to focus in on this, and you can read it for yourself if you want. Most people couldn't care less about the details. <laughs> they just want the, the meat. They don't want to worry about cooking it. All right, this is what we have to do is get a database on all of these issues that affect your bacteria and your enzymes. And here's the deal. Bacteria and enzymes are different, and an enzyme is nothing different than a virus. An uh, enzyme is a bunch of chemistry that goes and does a chemical job. It's, uh, they're, they're all enzymes. All enzymes are proteins. Some enzymes attack other proteins and break them down. Therefore, enzymes' usefulness is limited by the digestion from other enzymes. The key here is an enzyme is nothing but a virus. A virus comes in and attacks your proteins and breaks your proteins. Well, your uh, enzymes are supposed to go and attack those proteins and break those proteins. And you're also your enzymes are supposed to go out and break down your food 
and is they're supposed to break down all kinds of other chemistry and make it usable for you. But in order to get an enzyme, you have to have bacteria. Bacteria create the enzymes. No bacteria, no enzymes. No bacteria, no products created. No breaking down stuff. All right, and we have no idea what types there are. Well, we have an idea. We're starting to get some handle on it. Very, very limited. But they, they are everywhere in the body, and it's, it, there's, no, there's no database for it. 